We're preparing to kick off season number two, and as a refresher, I'm going to run you guys through some of the rosters really quick, just so you kind of know. So the pitching rotation, we have Sean Manaya, Joe Ross, Carlos Rondon, Michael Yanoa, and Adam Conley. One of you guys actually suggested that I switch Yanoa and Rondon to go with left, right, left, right, left sort of combo. So we'll try it out. We'll see how it does, but I think it should at least do a little bit better. And don't forget, we have Sean Doolittle as our closing pitcher. 91 overall. I feel pretty good about our bullpen now with Burnett and Barraclaw there as well. Uh, we're also going to give Whitgren, Severino, Gonzalez, and Dwensing some opportunities to shine. And Jack Flaherty is one of our uh, long-term relief pitchers. We'll see how he does. He might get demoted, but we'll give him an opportunity to shine at least here early on. For our lineups, we have Cameron Mabing, Gleyber Torres, Kyle Seeger, Dakota Elrod, Derek Dietrich, Mike Zanino, Esteban Floreal, Alex Rosendino, and Andre Johnson. Keep in mind over here on the bench, we have Dominic Payne, Gary Cooper, Jamil Aziz, and Dylan Ruiz. We're a little bit shorthanded here in the bench. I totally get that, but don't forget that we do have a major injury that we're dealing with right now. If we go over here, uh, we kind of look at disabled list. Marcus Frisk is out for one to two months with a shoulder tear. Once he's back, our outfit will be a little bit better. We'll probably bump Dietrich to the bench, and we'll have a little bit of a stronger bench, but I know we still gotta work on figuring that out and sorting it out a bit. And we've advanced a little bit ahead, and we are happy to have Marcus Frisk back. He's fresh off injury, but as you can tell, he's a little bit rusty. That shoulder's healed up nicely, but he's 0 for 4 in today's game. It's pretty much the end of the ballgame here in the bottom of the ninth inning with a guy on second base, nobody out. He could actually be a hero here, and at least Tie it up with the guy on second. And the first pitch, gonna be inside. The rust is showing as he swings in one that probably he should have let go by. So we're gonna see what he can do here. The 0 1 count, we're at home. The fans wanna see it. Our team is technically 500. We're five and a half games back in the division. First, he's gonna hit one of the second baseman. Okay, not horrible there because we do move the guy to third base with only one out. A pop out to deep left field is probably gonna score the runner on third. Now, who's up next? We're gonna see Andre Johnson. Two for four, two singles in the day. He's had a pretty good afternoon in the ballpark, and everybody out here in the fans, you can see we're starting to sell out some of the seats. We're not really selling out as much as I'd want to sell out the seats, but for the most part, people are showing up to the ballpark, which is good news for the fans in Miami. And the first pitch for this event is going to be high, this is going to be dropped into right field. That is going to be a base hit. We now have a guy in Andre Johnson with 94 speed on first base, which means a stolen base just might be coming up for him here. And the young fella, he's psyched up. Up next is Kyle Seeger. Again, we got a blazing fast dude on first base. We're going to go with a power swing here for Seeger. This one is going to be just fouled off a low changeup that he swings and misses on. Now again, we're going to try to get a stolen base with Johnson. They probably know what's coming. A pitch out is probably in our future, but we're going to see if he can still get it. Right down the middle, we're going to hit one into the gap. That one's going to drop. He's going to move to third. We're going to see Seager hold up at first base. We actually might send this guy home. they are not paying attention. It's going to be a play of the play. He's going to try to go in. He slides. He's in. He got it. That is going to be the big one that we need. Andre Johnson, get yourself a nice little run. That is a huge walk off there. Fantastic hit by Kyle Seager. He's pumped. He's been a little bit of a slump, and his teammates say, look at you. You broke the slump. You got a base hit. And Andre Johnson, what a heads-up play to score the run to win the game. And your player of the game today is going to be Esteban Floreal. A double, a home run, two RBIs, and two big base hits. Not a bad day for the young fella. And we pick up here in a brand-new ball game in the bottom of the eighth inning with a two run lead in the top of the eighth and we're facing Justin Turner. Now Shamanaya to this point has a shutout and I want to see if we can actually keep it going with him. He's got a first strike there. See if we can go a uh, nice little change up down under the low. Oh okay we got a good little foul ball there. Okay Justin Turner is on his heels now. Let's go with something that's going to drop out of the zone a little bit on him. Oh we missed on that one completely. Okay got to get our control back but Shamanaya I kind of think this guy can be our ace. I mean you've seen him in real life he no hit the Red Sox. I feel like he can actually do equal things here. This ball's going to be hit deep. We need someone to get it. Center fielder's going back. Center fielder will snag this one. That was a little scary. Justin Turner, a lot of power, a lot of great contact. Fantastic hitter for the Dodgers. But he pops out there, and now we're facing Austin Barnes. Even though he has a 377 average, this guy does not scare me nearly as much as what we saw from Justin Turner. So we're going up here. High and away. He's going to foul that one off. Solid cut there and solid pitch. Let's go two-seamer down and kind of inside a little bit. Good location, and we got him swinging on that one, too. So now we're in the driver's seat. Two strikes on him. Let's go change up. Just touch the edge of the, of the strike zone. Foul ball on that again. Okay, 0-2 count. Pitch count is getting a little bit high. Missed on that one. Okay. Nice little gut check. I think we want to go fastball inside and try to jam him. If he swings, we at least want to jam him. And we get him with the punch out. Beautiful throw there by Sean Manaya. And that is going to end the inning. 
The shutout is still going as we move on to the ninth inning. Only three hits allowed by Manaya. So we move on to the bottom of the ninth inning. Here comes Corey Seager, 0 for 3 on the day. Manaya has been pitching a gem. He's tired, but I want this guy to get the complete game shutout here. We're going to see if we can just work his way through the bottom half of this order. Now he's going to smack one over to the second baseman. Glaber Torres is going to grab that one, sees the out, throws it to first, and the first out of the inning, snagged there by Dakota Elrod. Corey Seager, go ahead and sit down. Now who's going to be up next for him? Cody Bellinger. Okay, this lineup is not easy. I mean, these guys haven't really had many hits, but you know they're talented. The Dodgers are loaded with lots of young talent. Now the first pitch is a slider, a little bit outside of the zone, or a lot outside of the zone. We're going to try and go four-seamer inside on him a little bit. See if we can freeze him. Okay, we've missed our spots a little bit. we got to get somebody warmed up. So we're going to go to the bullpen really quick, just in case after this one, if this doesn't work. Try and go fastball down. He's going to smack this one. Over! Oh, my God, what a play by the shortstop. Andre Johnson says, oh, not today. You're not getting four hits on my pitcher. Look at this one more time in slow motion. The ball's hit. Bellinger goes up. Andre Johnson says, let me go ahead and snag that one real quick for a smooth second out. Those cleats are kind of nice, too. Not even going to front. And here comes the final boss of the game, possibly. Yasiel Puig. He's got one base hit today. He's always a tough out, but he does strike out a lot. So what can Manaya do against him here? Nice little pitch here is going to be smacked to the first baseman. Manaya could run over there, but Dakota Elrod says, don't worry, I got this. And the complete game shutout is going to happen for Sean Manaya. Only three hits allowed against an extremely tough Dodgers lineup. Manaya gave up zero runs today. The squad played well, and you got to give props to Andre Johnson. Might have been the play of the game with that jumping snag there that could have been a shot into the gap. He potentially saved a base hit and maybe even a couple of runs, depending on what Yasiel Puig would have done with guys on base. Now, through the first 26 games of the season, we are 19 and 17, two games above 500, but we'll look and see how we're doing in our division in just a second. So, Shamanaya, two for three, or two and three on the year, 39 strikeouts, a 2.79 ERA, which is good in my opinion. We're just not giving him the run support that he needs, but we'll still give him room to blossom. Radon is here with a two and one record, a higher ERA, less strikeouts, I believe, or the same strikeouts, I believe, there. We go on to uh, Joe Ross. Joe Ross is 3-2 and two on the year. He's actually doing positive. 2.83 ERA. Fantastic in that sense. Michael Yanoa, 1 for 4 on the year. So he might be trade bait because we need somebody else to come in and maybe take his role. And then Adam Conley, 2-1 and one in the season. ERA of a 3.86. But, I mean, seriously, Michael Yanoa, 4.67. That's not good at all. If we look at our starting lineup for the most part, here's what we're looking at right now with Marcus Frisk back out here being healthy. So Cameron Maben... 345 average, one of the best in the league actually right now with two or two home runs and 10 RBIs. Marcus Frisk, again, just getting back in the swing of things, batting about 222. We've got Kyle Seager batting a paltry 227, but hopefully he'll get back out of this cold streak. He has been in for a while and now he's out of it. Zanino has five home runs and 16 RBIs. Not a high batting average though. Dakota Elrod with three home runs and 14 RBIs and a low batting average. As you can see, there's kind of a trend going on right now. Alex Rosendino, not really getting a ton of really extra base hits or anything of that nature, but overall he's been solid. I mean, his contact and his, his uh, power aren't very bad for a rookie at this point. Derek Dietrich is actually the surprise player on the season. In the bottom half of the order, he's batting with seven home runs, 15 RBIs, again, not a ton there, but a 302 average. And then the other guy that we need to reward is gonna be Glaber Torres. This dude is batting a ridiculous 273 for his second year in the league with five home runs, 17 RBIs, and he's been making plays in the field left and right. Andre Johnson at 231, three home runs and 17 RBIs. We can look at Jamil Aziz, one home run, six RBIs, and a batting average that we won't really talk about. And then Esteban Floreal batting 231, three homers, 12 RBI, RBIs. So you can see the power is kind of spread out. The average has got to do better, but Derek Dietrich and Cameron Maben, they're doing extremely well. But I want to see how this batting order works out a few more games before I make any big changes to it. But let me know in the comments down below, what sort of changes do you guys want to see in this batting order? I know that a lot of you guys might consider this a snap judgment that I probably shouldn't make this move, but I kind of feel like this is the route that I need to go. I need to try to win a little bit sooner rather than later. So Alex Wood, we're going to trade for him, Yimmy Garcia, and Dustin May. Dustin May is a fantastic prospect with about a B or A potential. Yimmy Garcia, 28 years of age, is actually a really good starting or a relief pitcher at a 76 overall. They can kind of help me out of my bullpen a little bit. So we're going to trade Michael Yanoa, Eliza Hernandez, who wasn't really doing anything in my bullpen, probably didn't even want to be with the organization. Actually, I know he didn't want to be with the organization because he didn't want to resign with me. And then Brian Hernandez, we're going to trade all those guys 
and get a pretty good starting pitcher back in return, I think this will be a good trade for our team overall. Now the interesting piece that I honestly didn't pay attention to until just right now is that I have four left-handed pitchers and only one right-hander. We'll work on fixing that in the future, but for now, let's see how that experiment works out for us. So we're moving ahead and we're finding Jamil Aziz in the game. Look, he's pinch hitting, he's been struggling, but we're giving the young fella an opportunity to shine here. A little bit of playing time with two home runs and a really, really bad, you know, batting average. Let's give him an opportunity to try to do something to pick up his spirits and maybe one day he'll become an everyday player for us. Now we do have a guy on base in Glaber Torres. First pitch is going to be inside. Great eye overall there from Jamil Aziz. Again, he doesn't get a ton of playing time, but he needs to make the most of it when he comes into a late game situation like this. So the manager let, lets him come in. 1-0 count now for him. Next pitch is in. That one's going to be low. So a good eye so far from Aziz. Jamil Aziz again now with a 2-0 count. Looking for something solid here. This one's going to be in the zone, and he's going to drill that one into the gap. That one is going to score the runner. He's going to move over to second base. That has tied this game up. He's getting a stand-up triple, I believe, in my opinion. They're going to throw it over to third base. It's going to be way too late. He's going to stand up there, and with one out, Jamil Aziz puts it into the gap, and look at what he needed. Right there was the confidence that the young fella needed. He got the hit, and now the manager feels like this could be a good pinch hitter for us later on in the year. Up next is Cameron Maven. This is our starting right fielder, the guy that's kind of, you know, advancing right ahead of Jamil Aziz. Maybe one day Jamil Aziz will usurp him and become the new starting right fielder, but for now, Cameron Maven is having one heck of a season. Now he has a runner on third base. Can he knock him in here? This one's going to be high. He's going to put it into the outfield. It's going deep. This one's going back. This one is going to score the runner. He's going to get to second base there, and that is going to be another walk-off hit for the cardiac kids there in Miami. Jamil Aziz with the clutch triple. Cameron Maven with the deep shot to left field over the left fielder's head. And just like that, Miami wins another game. This squad is talented, I'm telling you guys. Taking a look at the standings, that puts us at two games above 500. We're seven games back in our division. The Phillies are actually on fire right now, but... By talent, we're ranked 21st in the league, so we're technically outperforming what we're supposed to be doing, but I'm still really proud of this team so far. I'm also going to give you guys a look at the top prospects list, and Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., both being obviously sons of former major leaguers, are in the Toronto Blue Jays organization, and that is absolutely insane. So you can see Alvin Morris for us has moved up to number four on the list. I mean, this kid is talented. He's been killing it so far in AAA. Next up, we have Sixto Sanchez at number six. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Fernando Tatis Jr. Anyone else in our organization? Sergio Gonzalez now, the new pitcher that we got in the most recent draft, is sitting there at number 23 as a 19-year-old. We also have Jimmy Shearn, another 19-year-old in AA. We have Trevor Rogers, a 21-year-old in AAA. We have so many prospects here, it's kind of insane. Look at this, Anderson Espinosa, Dylan Ruiz. I think we might have one more, AJ Barry at number 47. And that's gonna do it. I mean, that's gotta be a lot of prospects in the top 50. Our organization is loaded again. We're outperforming right now, but I feel really good about the future of the Miami Marlins.